it's been a really fascinating journey um, with this uh, project and, and what um, Auntie Fran has asked me to do in connecting with a sale, um, a sale that uh, has been here at Paya Museum. It was gifted to the museum from uh, a family from oh, no, sit down. from uh, Poluat. And um, the, the, the idea was for me to, as, the, as an artist here, to find a, a uh, connection to respond to the sale. And so um, I got to spend some time with the sale and I brought my son Leona here too, right? To look at the sale and, and talk about it and how it was made and where it was from and, and just to try to find out and connect to its story, its origin, what it was used for, the people, the culture that it's from. And so, um, and so that's, that's what we did. And we did some research online and, and found some videos and photos of people and family from, from the island, or I'm sorry, from, from, from the atoll. Um, yeah, Poluat is actually an atoll, which is different from an island. Um, usually it's a ring of land with, with, a, with a lagoon in the middle. Um, Poluat is a little different, but it does have its lagoon. And um, actually, Mickey, I think you can pull up the, uh, you can pull up the map of what Poluat looks like. Yeah, so there's Poluat right there. Mm -hmm. And where are we? Yeah, so, we? so Poluat is located in the federal states of Micronesia, which is the Western Pacific area. And it's in the state of Chuuk. And it's, uh, it's one of the uh, atolls that are part of the, that state. So we, and we're very far on the other side of the Pacific. So how, how many airplanes do we have to take? And how many cars? Oh, well, you have to take airplanes and boats. And cars? Maybe a car. I don't know if there's any cars on Polo. Maybe you have to take four cars in 24 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's very far. So I think you have to fly to Hawaii and then maybe to Guam. And then maybe you take a boat there or an air or a water plane. Um, or maybe a boat with a speedboat with the bunker where you could sleep in. Yeah, I think we'd have to do some more research on how to get there. Or maybe you take a canoe with the sail. Where do you sleep? In the canoe. But, and then maybe that sail was used. Can you pull up the, uh, the picture of the sail, Mickey? I would love to. Wait, that's in the shape of the sail. The yeah, it is kind of in the shape of the sail, huh? The island, the, the atoll. Yeah, that's a good observation. So that's the sale that we are responding to. And where was that sale made? What's the name of the atoll? Uh, Poluwatu. Poluwat. Poluwat. <laughs> right? Okay. And who, who made the sale? Who, which people in the island in Opolua made the sale? What did we find out? It was made by the women, right? The women of Polua. Their hands, it's made from pandanus leaf. And you can see up close, you can see up close the, the weaving mm -hmm. of the of the sail there. But what but um, uh, what were their, what were, what were their hats made out of? Their hats? Mm -hmm. Um, well, their, 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 their headdresses, I believe they're made out of flowers. 
they probably use the pandanus leaf too to weave the band and color it. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the women there that are dancing that made the sale too, right? So that was that was really interesting for us to find out, right? And what's the sale used for? A boat. For what? A sailboat. Yeah, but what is what what is the boat used the sail for? So then it um to so then the um boat doesn't blow back and forth back and forth. Ah. So the wind fills the sail? Mm -hmm. And then it blasts right back. Mm, okay. All right. All right. So um, in, uh, in learning about the sail and understanding it, we kind of dove into what the, the culture of Polowat, right? What did we find out there? We saw that video of the, the people giving the, the priest there the ordination where the chief and the people gave the priest the navigator gifts. Let's watch some of that video. Basilio receives a very special award from Chief Manape, who ties Basilio's wrist with a young leaf from the coconut tree, signifying an honorary completion of the study of navigation. Polowat, the islands of Patu, and neighboring islands of Sadawal, 150 miles west, are home to what are probably the last traditional navigators of the Pacific. With an unparalleled knowledge of stars and sea, and information passed through songs and stories for centuries, these navigators can sail their canoes where they choose without Western navigational aids of any sort. Canoes have been sailed recently to Guam, Saipan, and Japan, and when helpers needed in Hawaii, on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, it was from these Caroline Islands that the navigator came and sailed a canoe from Maui to Tahiti, never having been to either of these islands before. Speaking in the ancient language of the navigators, Chief Manape gives Basilio a necklace of fire coral and awards him the title, Navigator to the Heavens. The fire coral, when alive underwater on a reef, gives a painful burn when touched. This piece has been taken from the sea and prepared for Basilio. Worn exclusively by traditional navigators, the necklace symbolizes burning desire and power. Representatives from the four islands of Patu bring gifts and explain the significance of each. From Pulawat comes a carving and a map. From Tamatam comes a canoe paddle for transportation and a canoe baler to get the water out of a canoe. Polop sends a breadfruit pole so that Basilio can reach this way and that way among the islands to bring in people, much like one would do in a breadfruit tree. Also from Polop comes a carving of a shell, designating Basilio as one of the men who can call people to assemble. Two plaques are brought from the island of Hope. One represents the ability to gather people, while the wood carving represents the marimar, or flowered headdress, which contains only good news inside. Basilio's biological family then gives intricate beadwork necklaces to the members of Basilio's new family of the church. After preparations are made and his new family has taken communion, Basilio first offers communion to his biological family and then to the rest of the congregation. JP, you're on mute. 
Wasn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. You see all the gifts that they gave him? You see, we, we can see that the art of navigation, learning those skills on how to how to sail the ocean and find the different islands and visit all their family and friends on the different atolls, right? That skill we saw that is very important to their culture, right? And that sail, the sail that was gifted to us, that's a very important piece of their culture. What do you think about that? <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so um, okay. we learned about the cult. We learned what the sale is. Okay. We learned about the culture of, okay. in Polawan, and we found out that navigating is and wayfinding, that's a very important part of their culture. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, we also found out from the family that gave us the, that gave the um, that gave the, the sale to the our museum? to the museum. They said that the, this sale was made by the women of the chief's house. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. so so we think about where the sale is from. So we we know we find all this information now, right? And now but how do you know it's from Polua? Well, because the family that gave it to us told us that it's from Polua. Uh, but who did they tell? Who did they tell? They told us. Mm, but how did they bring it here? Uh, they brought it with their hands in their car. Mm -hmm. And they gave it, they gifted it to the museum when long ago with Auntie Fran being here. Was I born yet? No, it was before you were born. Way before? Way before you were born. <laughs> um, so we found out a lot about the sale. We found out a lot about the culture. Now we have to think about how we respond to the sale. What will we make? that's going to respond to it. What do you think we should do? A voicemail. A voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> what else? How about something artistic? What's something artistic um, uh, that we're good at? Painting a shell. Painting a shell? Uh -huh. OK. All right. So, you know, we, I was thinking about about the sale, and I was thinking about um, Polawat, and um, it made me think of uh, something that my friend Joey Joey Kenya had told me a long time ago when he asked me to design a logo for for him. Um, I think it was for Epic. Our friends at Epic, and one of the I have Epic. Yeah, you do. Um, one of the concepts he had mentioned was the pico, which is the spiral, the spiral design that we see in a lot of our um, is half cultural... of it gone. No, not half of it's gone. But look. Yeah. Oh, for that picture, yes, but the one that we have, no. Um, but that is a symbol of the beginning of life. It's the. Was that the simple one? But. Mm -hmm. But a mama foe probably got the one without this part, without that. Yes. Part. Yeah. Oh, and guess what? What? You know, when you were born, but you were in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, in the NICU. Mm -hmm. Well, in the office that we went into, every when we were at the hospital, there was a big mural of that spiral symbol of that pico. And every day when I walked in there to go see you, I always looked at it. And I always thought about what my friend Joey told me 
and it's the beginning of life. It's and a symbol of the beginning of life, and it was the beginning of your life. And then you thought you wanted to make it when I was six. Hmm. <laughs> that then, would have been interesting. <laughs> 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 that's a that's a cool connection, right? <laughs> Look, when you were a baby and you were in the hospital and that mural was there, mm -hmm. and I looked at it every day, but I never thought I would make one. And now look at our mural. You made one? Yeah, that one behind <laughs> us. So thinking of what my friend Joey told me, what I saw at the hospital, and thinking about the sale and where it's from and who made it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thinking about that? Listen. Yes. I thought about, oh, wouldn't it be nice if the sale, it's home? It's so far away from home, right? Uh -huh. Look, face the camera so people can see your face. Wouldn't it be nice for it to talk to the place where it's from? Where's it from? Oh, wow. That's right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I don't know if they can see. Can you guys see back here? So this mural, you can see the pico spiral here. And it's something that, you know, what I learned, you know, it shows up in nature from everything from what? The shell. A seashell. All the way up to our Milky Way galaxy. It's a natural occurring um, shape. Um, it's even tied into the golden ratio and the Fibonacci spiral. And, um, and so, you know, it's just this, you know, it has this, um, this quality that just resonated with me creatively. And so I just started painting the, the spiral. Come here, come here. Right. Do you remember the video of me painting the spiral at first, right? Uh -huh. And um, it just kept going and going. And then the more, the more that it developed, it started feeling like this transmission, almost like a radio signal. And it was like, and I, the, the spot that I chose in the wall, if you look at the wall, it kind of, if you look at it like the Pacific Ocean, that, that part, where the center is, is kind of where Poluat is in the, um, in the ocean, the, uh, the northwestern side of the Pacific. And I just kind of thought of it like the mural is just, or the spiral is just like sending out this transmission to the sail, right? It's like, what's, this, what, what's, what's, what's the Poluat saying to the sail? Um, that it needs to come home. That it needs to come home? Or? Or? What else? What else? <laughs> <laughs> that it's safe where it's at, that it's in good hands with Auntie Fran and Leone and Mr. JP, and right? Mommy. And Mommy. Yeah. And that it's in a good place where it's being taken care of. But it wants, it's like we're sending the signal to let you, let the sale know where it's at Does or where it's from, eyes? right? Does the sale have eyes? I don't know, but it has, it has um, the spirit of its people in it that made it, right? The women that wove all the pandanus leaves together, stand up. So people can see you. And so what do you see here? The next part that we're adding into the mural is a um, is a snapshot of the women of Poluat. And um, and I found I found some video footage of them um, you know in that video of that ordination video of them dancing and I connected to that right away because it's very similar to our Psalm 1 dancing where it's group dancing, synchronized, and even the sounds of the songs and 
and the movements, telling stories with their hands. And I just felt when I saw the movements of their hands, that's why I wanted to make sure that we have an image of their hands because their hands, I feel like once we have the sail set up right here in front of the mural, it's like their hands are pushing energy and vibration into the sail. And you also have the spiral sending out that transmission of vibration and energy. Is it on people? Yeah. And they'll send a message to the sail for yeah. them? That's right. That's right. Come here. Hey, come here. Come here. Come on. People want to hear from you. Huh? They want to hear what you have to say. So what do you think about that connection? Yeah. Can you understand it? With the spiral, it has vibration and energy. I can't understand the words. Oh, there's no words up there. It's just sending this feeling to the sail. That this is where you're from. You're from Polowat. You were made here by these women, by the women from Polowat. And they're sending good vibrations and good signals to you that you're safe, huh? And that you're loved. And maybe one day you'll come home. Maybe one day you'll sail home, right? But how? I don't know. Maybe someone will bring a canoe here one day. Wait, and try to sail instead of drive? Or yeah. maybe they'll put their canoe on top of the on top of the car. But they can't drive on the ocean. They can use their boat. Maybe you can make the canoe for the sail. And sail take the sail back to Polovat. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> Hold on, Daddy. Oh. Oh, Leone, can okay. I ask you another question? Leone, do you have another message for the sale? Would you like to you have another message? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Do you have another message for the sale, Leon? No. No? Mm. Well, you have been it has been such an honor to have you here, Leonie. And we are so, we have just been, we love listening to you and learning along with you. Thank you so much. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you for what? For having me here. Thank you for having me here. And what did you learn? Mm. What did you learn? <laughs> okay. Well, the mural is still the mural is still ongoing. Wait here, and so we'll be painting it for the next um, week year. or two, week or two year. We're gonna take a year to paint this. Forty-five thousand one hundred years. Oh my gosh, that's too long. Um, Lena, do you know how long your dad? Listen, listen. Leone, do you know how long your dad took to paint this as it is right now? No. He worked so hard every day. Four days. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to work. My daddy told me in his ear. In my ear. <laughs> Put your hand out like this. No. And okay. Jimmy, oh. we're going to... So for everybody yeah. watching, um, as JP progresses and finishes, and it won't be much longer, uh, we are going to add um, a, stop in, um, a time lapse to the end of this video on YouTube so that you can see the full process um, from start to finish. And so JP, any last words that you would like to, to gift us today? Um, well, I just wanted to thank everyone again. Um, this has been a very different, um, project and a very different, uh, process for me. Um, normally when I do murals, I plan everything out as much as I can. Um, even to the point of like, you know, sketching and coloring 
maybe even digitizing the design. And this one, I just wanted to like kind of relax and um, really open my mind and my heart to what, you know, to, to, to making it that connection to the sale and thinking about the people that made the sale, um, where it was from, um, you know, what its backstory was as much as we could. And then just really thinking about a kind of connection. So even just kind of freestyling, you know, the mural on the wall and just starting with that spiral. Originally, I wasn't going to do the spiral. I, the spiral came after, you know, I was just thinking of just doing some abstract blue sky to see blue color scheme just for a background. Mm -hmm. But that spiral spoke to me and it just, you know, what my friend had shared with me a long time ago and then thinking about that mosaic mural um, at the hospital that I looked at every day when we would go see Leona and spend our time there with him. Uh, yeah, that that part right there was just uh, just real fascinating for me just to stay keeping my my heart and mind open to that and and then just letting it flow and then just staying really free and 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 not really thinking about anything with all the brush strokes and just a powerful um, uh, connection and then we had some music playing too um, some very cultural music from Micronesia, which included a lot of different um, songs from different um, island countries, but just hearing the chants and the singing and, you know, and even though I don't understand the words, but I know that that vibration and I know those tones and I know the, you know, especially the, 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 the church choir ones, it just kind of took me back in my memories of you know, being in church and being in choir practice and everyone singing and putting their energy in together to make this beautiful sound. And just while I'm up there painting, it's just, you know, I feel like like my ancestors are just guiding me, you know, even the ancestors of Poloat, you know, just, I had never heard of Poloat before this project. And um, just to learn so much and to make that connection was, was a really special, um, thing for me and um and and so i really enjoyed that process of just staying free and clear and 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 just uh, allowing you know the creativity and the connection to take over and we talked about i think through this process you're listening i would add that into it because you've been like a recipient of you know, because you've been you've been listening with an open heart and open mind. So thank you, JP. Yeah. <laughs> and I will just say that if um you know through this transmission we are we're hoping to learn you know more from our community. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, the sale was donated by Pastor Paul Otoko. Um, and and we definitely would love to know more um, if it comes our way. Um, and we will be thinking about um, where, where the sale will you know end up on its journey. And we're just so blessed to be taking care of it. And it's been in good hands, JP, with you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for letting it guide you. And um, thank you for everybody who has joined us today. Um, we will see you next month. Check back in with us uh, at the end of February, and we'll see you then.